Dear students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn about the hard blocks. Under the term hard block is understood any condition in which there is an obstacle in the conduction of the electrical impulse through the cardiac electrical conduction system. A hard block can occur anywhere in the electrical conduction system of the heart, starting at the SA node, then at the atrial conducting pathways, then at the AV junction, the bundle branches and their subdivisions. The presence of heart block can result in either slowed conduction, intermittent conduction failure or complete conduction failure. In order to understand this lesson, you must have a great knowledge of the electrical conduction system of the heart. So for that, I will put the link in the right upper corner of the video where I explain the electrical conduction system of the heart in detail. Okay, let's start one by one. First we have sinus block. An unhealthy sinus node may stop pacing for a short period of time after which it restores its activity again. The sinus block on the ACG will be presented as a short pause, a flat baseline after a normal cardiac cycle. After the pause, because the SA node restores its activity again, the P waves will look exactly the same as the P waves before the pause. But as we learned previously, in a situation when this pause takes longer, an atrial automaticity focus may wake up to fire a bit, which in that case it represents an escape bit. And if there is a complete and definite block in the SA node, we expect an atrial focus to wake up and to become dominant, which in this case it represents an escape rhythm. You will distinguish these conditions by the different morphology of the P wave. You remember, right? If not, I will link the video in the right upper corner, where I explain these conditions in detail. Now let's focus on the AV node blocks. AV node blocks are an obstacle in the conduction of the electrical impulse through the AV node. They either delay the conduction of the impulse from the atria to the ventricles, or completely block it. But they can completely block some impulses or all impulses. According to this, we have three degrees of AV blocks. First degree AV block is presented with a delay in the conduction. Second degree AV block is presented with complete block of some impulses. And third degree AV block is presented with complete block of all impulses, with completely independent atrial and ventricular depolarization. Now let's go one by one. First degree AV block is characterized by a delay in the conduction of the impulse in the AV node. This prolongation of conduction on ACG is shown as prolonged PR interval. You remember from the previous lessons that when the impulse reaches the AV node, the conduction is slowed down. And on the ACG, this is presented with a flat baseline, a pause after the P wave. Now, since there is a present block in the AV node, the conduction is even more slowed down. So this pause in the conduction lasts even longer. Therefore, we expect the duration of the PR interval to increase. The duration of PR interval of more than 0.2 seconds indicates first degree block. Another characteristic is that the delay in the conduction is consistent, so each PR interval will be equal. Next we have second degree AV block. With second degree AV block, some of the impulses coming from the atria are completely prevented from conduction to the ventricles. There are two types of second degree AV block. One with progressively increasing duration of conduction until complete block occurs, and the other 
which completely prevented conductions of the impulses to the ventricles before a conduction occurs. They are called Winkebach and Mobitz. Winkebach block occurs directly in the AV node, while Mobitz block is situated below the AV node in the His bundle. Winkebach block is presented with progressively increased duration of conduction until complete block occurs. This is presented with gradually lengthened PR interval until complete block occurs, leaving only P wave without a following QRS complex. This blockage repeats in series 2, 3, 4, 5 or more. Now with Mobitz block there is a complete block of conduction of 2, 3 or more impulses before the conduction to the ventricles occurs. So we have a couple of P waves before a QRS complex appears. We can have 2-in-1, 3-in-1 or 4-in-1 prevented conductions. Sometimes this pattern may look to you like premature beats, but don't be fooled. In Mobitz, the PP intervals are consistent and also they have the same morphology. While with premature beats, the PP prime interval will be shorter than the regular ones and also the P prime wave will have different morphology than the one generated at the SA node. Next, we have the third degree block. The third degree block represents a complete AV node block when not a single impulse from the atria is conducted to the ventricles. Because of that, we have completely independent atrial and ventricular depolarization. That's why the P waves are not going to be coordinated with the QRS complexes. The atria are paced by the SA node and the ventricles are paced by a junctional or a ventricular focus. So on the ACG, since the atria are paced by the SA node, we have a normal looking P wave. And if you measure the rate using PP intervals, you will detect that the rate of the P waves is in 60 to 100 beats per minute range, which is the rate of pacing of the SA node. But since the ventricles are paced by a focus located below the blockage, the ventricles will be paced at a rate slower than the atria. The junctional automaticity foci pace at a rate from 40 to 60 beats per minute and the automaticity foci within the ventricles pace at a rate between 20 and 40 beats per minute. So if we measure the rate using the RR intervals, you will see that the rate of the R waves is also in this range. Lastly, we have bundle branch blocks. Bundle branch blocks are an obstacle in the conduction of the electrical impulse through the bundle branches. Normally, the impulse is conducted quickly to the both ventricles at the same time. This normally conducted wave of depolarization is recorded on the ACG as a normal narrow QRS complex. But when there is a blockage in one bundle branch, the depolarization of the ventricles is not happening at the same time. And one ventricle is depolarized later than the other. The depolarization of the ventricle supplied by the blocked branch is much slower because the depolarization wave spreads through the myocytes surrounding the blocked area rather than through the normal conducting pathways. In the other hand, the depolarization of the other ventricle supplied by the non-blocked branch occurs as usual, on time. With that, we expect the QRS complex to look unusual. Separate depolarization of the left and right ventricle on ACG is presented with two R waves next to each other giving M-shaped QRS complexes or two S waves next to each other giving W-shaped QRS complexes. The first wave represents the depolarization of the ventricle that is supplied by the non-blocked branch 
and the second wave represents the depolarization of the ventricle supplied by the blocked branch. Now, because the right side of the heart is recorded by the V1 and V2 chest leads, if there is right bundle branch block, we expect white M-shaped QRS complexes in V1 and V2 and W-shaped QRS complexes in V5 and V6. And because the left side of the heart is recorded by the V5 and V6 chest leads, if there is left bundle branch block, we expect white M-shaped QRS complexes in V5 and V6 and W-shaped QRS complexes in V1 and V2. With that, we've come to an end. I hope that we have clarified all the issues and now everything makes sense to you. If yes, please make sure to subscribe to support me. Thank you for your time and I hope to see you again.